But we're very lucky to have our third awardee with us this morning to share some of his insights into his research. Please welcome Dr. Edward Boyden, who is the Y. Eva Tan Professor in Neurotechnology, Professor of Departments of Biological Engineering and Brain and Cognitive Sciences, Media Lab, McGovern Institute, MIT. So please welcome Ed. Well, it's a fantastic honor to be here today and to be named a recipient of a Gairdner Award, along with my two distinguished colleagues, friends, and collaborators. Uh, of course, I'm very grateful to the Gairdner Foundation and to the esteemed committee uh, for this wonderful recognition. Um, and as you've heard throughout, you know, this is a very collaborative endeavor, biology and medicine. So um, to echo earlier comments, I have uh, eternal gratitude for uh, all the great group members, collaborators, um, and supporters over the years, as well as uh, the great support of my wonderful family and friends. I guess I wanted to comment a little bit about uh, how I think science can uh, connect with, with the world. You know, I think of science as an adventure story. You know, and we scientists are explorers. And just as with explorers in the past, uh, you know, working in such a, a profession is a great privilege, even as it's filled with uncertainty and, and drama and excitement. But interestingly, and I think the Gardner Foundation really you know, recognizes this, you know, we're increasingly exploring not just you know, scaling a mountain for the first time or exploring outer space, we're exploring inner space. You know, how do we launch into ourselves? Can we see how the brain composes thought or stirs feeling or drives action or parses out sensation? Um, and of course, when the brain goes awry in a brain disorder state, over a billion people around the world, it's been estimated, suffer from some kind of brain disease. My own grandmother has Alzheimer's. You know, these diseases not only affect our lifespan, but they, they change who we are, how we relate to our loved ones, and, and that makes this quest uh, all the more uh, salient and important. Growing up, I was raised by my mother, who immigrated to the United States and studied biochemistry, and my father, who, as a manager, uh, thought a lot about human behavior and the mysteries thereof. And so from a young age, I became obsessed with the intersection of these worlds. Could, through fundamental sciences, like chemistry, could you actually shed light on the human condition in some way? And from these insights, maybe could we as a species become more enlightened, less cruel, more empathetic? I was very lucky. Although I grew up in a suburb without a lot of um, uh, uh, active scientific programs, I found a, a local university that had a program where they let kids skip years of high school and get right into a laboratory. And so I started learning chemistry and physics from the masters right away. For serendipitously, this experience was exactly what I needed to prepare me to bring new perspectives onto brain science, because as an outsider, a chemist, physicist, and engineer, um, I was able to think about problems from a different angle than a lot of my peers. And I guess serendipity is a big theme that courses its way throughout this adventure of science. In our own, in our own work, optogenetics, serendipity was key. The natural world had generated in single-celled microbes like algae and bacteria these molecules that we found almost on the first try to work in neurons to make them activatable or silenceable by pulses of light. My fellow awardee Carl Weisroth and I, when we were both students, started brainstorming. How would we control brain cells so we could activate them and see how they trigger behavior or overcome disease? And uh, we started just thinking about, well, if the natural world had made something that we could use, that'd be fantastic. And we started collecting genes from many scientists. At one point, Carl put one of the genes, the chanorhodopsin you've heard about, into a cell, and I shine light on it. And I still remember at one o'clock in the morning, the thrill of feeling like you've seen something for the first time. It had worked in the first try. We were able to activate brain cells with pulses of light. Since that moment, we found a steady stream of such molecules, mining genomes from all over the world, from different ecosystems. And I guess that's the note I want to close on. You know, here are these tools that are developing insights into memory and emotion, Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. But in an era where questioning the conservation of natural resources is increasingly common, it's important to point out that the natural world, ecosystems and parts of the globe that you know, you know, many of us have never even visited, continue to yield treasures beyond imagination to help us in this quest to understand and to heal ourselves. Thank you very much.